Hello everyone, so today I am here to do my current TBR pile video. Um, in the last week or so, I have talked about like books that I want to read in 2021, like main priorities of like classics, nonfiction, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but today I'm just going to be talking about all of the books that are on my shelves that I have not read. You guys know me, I have a pretty small TBR at all times. I'm just like not someone who really enjoys having a big TBR. Um, this one is definitely probably one of my biggest TBRs I've ever had, or not ever, but like definitely in the last like three or four years, um, especially because today I will also be talking about all the classics that are on my shelf that I haven't read yet. Like I'm just doing all of the books that are on my shelf that I haven't read. Just as a beginning of the year, this is what I have. I also really like these videos because it kind of keeps me like in tune with what is on my shelf as well as like looking at a book like if it's been on there for like two of these TBR pile videos in a row like do I really want to read it that kind of thing um because I do these every six months or so because I don't do a TBRs each month I just do currently reading videos and then these type of videos again every six seven months or so so yeah today we're just going to go through the pretty good size stack of books that I currently have on my TBR. Um, again, these are physical books. I do have some ebooks and stuff, especially recently. I've recently kind of gotten back into using my Kindle, um, but I'm not gonna talk about those. I'm just gonna talk about physical books. So yeah, let's get on into it. So the first book is definitely one of the books that I'm kind of debating if I want to keep on my TBR. It's one of those books that I've heard absolutely no one talk about. It's a book that I went into a bookshop and just picked it up on a whim, just no nothing else besides the cover and the description, and I picked it up because it sounded really interesting, but then I had really wanted to read it in the fall, and I just never got around to it. The fall was a kind of a weird reading time for me because I moved and everything, but that is Walk Away by Cory Doctorow. I would love to know if anyone has read this and if it's worth it. It's kind of a like a dystopian, uh, like weird kind of commentary on poor and rich. Again, that's something that really interested me because I enjoy those kinds of stories, especially after watching like Parasite and stuff. But again, this is a book I've just never heard anyone talk about and it has yet to like really make me go, oh my god, I really want to read this. But it is gorgeous. I'm pretty sure this is a UK paperback and y'all know my favorite color is orange, so that's the only why I was drawn to it. Um, but yeah, this has been on my TBR since the last summer, so I'm, I am debating on this one. I'd love to hear if other people have read it. And then I have two books by the same author, Katrina Leno. I have You Must Not Miss and Horrid. These are two books I am really excited to read. They're the only YA I really have on my TBR. Um, I do always like having a couple of YA books just in case I get in that mood kind of thing. Um, so yeah, these are two books I've been interested in for so, so long. Got this one for Christmas, got this one in November, maybe? I just honestly placed a random, like, order of books in November just because I was like I want new books so I'm very very excited for both of these so those are definitely staying. <laughs> and then I still have a bunch of books by Will McIntosh. This is an author that Haley and I have really enjoyed in the past so I decided to pick up a bunch of his books all at once over the summer and yet these are ones that I again wanted to read in the fall and I didn't get around to as much reading as I had meant to and these ones just kind of didn't happen. I'm still very much interested in all of these and I feel like these are books I don't mind keeping on my shelf for a while because they're just kind of ones that I'm like, if I just need a quick little read or don't know what else to read, I feel like these books are perfect to be keeping around. So that's an author that I'm definitely still interested in reading. Next up I have Follow Me to Ground by Sue Ransford. This is a weird magical realism book that I got for Christmas. Very excited about that. I am thinking of reading or doing like a reading vlog of just like short books again. I did one, gosh, what was it? It was in November, I think. I did like a reading vlog just reading the shortest books on my TBR. I have so many tiny books right now and I don't know how it happens. I might do another one of those if you guys are interested, but another two short books. I have One Night, Two Souls Went Walking by Ellen Cooney. This is a book that I am so excited for and it is another one that I just walked into a bookstore and picked up because I thought it sounded interesting and another one like that is Fauna by Christine Van Dijs um, and this is translated from French I'm pretty sure I think I'm pretty sure they were French Canadian because this is a Canadian book so yes lots of short books lots of short books I also have 
um, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tashukazu Kawaguchi, and this is the second book to this series, I guess. Um, definitely want to read that one. I definitely want to read some more Asian literature very soon because I want to do more recommendation videos. I did a I, I've done many Japanese uh, literature recommendations and I did a Korean one a couple months ago and I definitely want to read more Chinese literature so I can do a Chinese one. But yeah, another Japanese literature is Where the Wild Ladies Are by Aoko Matsuda. This is one I'm so excited for. So I feel like this one, that one will definitely be soon. Honestly, I just want to read all of these even though like, I'm not gonna lie, right now I'm so not in a reading mood. Um, I'm happy because all of these books still bring me like joy and very much like I still definitely want to read this but like right now I'm not actively reading so I'm like ah oh, it'll be fun when I finally pick that one up. <laughs> and then speaking of Chinese literature I have Notes of a Crocodile by Sh Shu Miaojin and this is a piece of queer translated literature from Taiwan. This is definitely the number one on my list, and again, I don't want to read it right now because I'm not reading anything. I don't want to not enjoy it. It's one of those situations. I've just given up on reading until like February. You guys are going to get my um, January wrap up very soon and going to be like, wow, Katie didn't read anything. And I'm going to be like, yeah, life. <laughs> And then I actually have two books that are technically my boyfriend's, but like I haven't read them and we own them, so I really want to read them, and that is Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melkor, and this was translated from Spanish. Um, and then I also have The Pigeon by Patrick Siskin, and this is by the same author who wrote Perfume. I'm also pretty sure this one is translated from German. And yeah, these are two books that my boyfriend has read in the past and really enjoyed, and I get recommended a lot. So, might as well just put them on my shelf. Another piece of translated literature, I have A Luminous Republic by Andres Abarba, and this is from Spanish. I'm pretty sure they are a South American author, and yeah, don't know much about it. That one it was definitely one that I took someone's recommendation for. This is a book that I got for Christmas, and I have The Harpy by Megan Hunter. This is definitely, I feel like, the next book I want to read. Like before I decided to just give up on reading for the month of January. This was the one I was going to read. I'm pretty sure like Goodreads says I'm reading it. I'm not reading it. Oh, another book that I just picked up on a complete whim. Literally, I finished watching The King, which is a K-drama, and I was like, I need parallel universes in my life. If you have any parallel universe books to recommend, tell me down below. I just looked up, I was like, Parallel Universe Books, and this one popped up, and it sounded fantastic, so I decided to pick it up. It's by an author that I've heard a lot about, and that is Terry Pratchett, and that is The Long Earth. Um, and yeah, this is a book that has to deal with um, parallel worlds and parallel, like, time. And yeah, if you can see, like, it has, like, the two moons and stuff. Ah, I feel like there was a movie that had that. Wasn't that, like, a plot twist in some movie? I don't even know what movie I'm talking about, so I don't know if you guys do, but yeah, this is a book that I just picked up on a whim. I literally was like, thrift books order, placed, and then I got it. <laughs> Weird how that happens. But yeah, that's a random book that I decided to pick up. And then, of course, the a big one that I have as a goal to read pretty early on this year, I think this might be like my February kind of tackling um, is Death's Neighbor Report by Lucy Elman. I started it back when I first got it in September, but I did put it down because I didn't want to be reading it during my school semester because that just didn't sound like a good idea. But yeah, oh, I'm so excited for this book still. I've been excited to read it like since I heard about it, so still very excited for that one. All right, we get into some classics. I got some white spines to start with. So we got Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. I just want to keep reading Dickens, as I keep saying. I have a couple of Dickens, because yeah, I also have A Tale of Two Cities by Dickens. Probably going to be reading these with my Patreon. We read um, Hard Times together. I feel like Dickens is a good one for a kind of buddy read. Um, yeah, if you guys want to read classics, like if you're intimidated by classics or want to read more this year, on Patreon we have been reading, we read classics together. Um, we also have Middle March by George Eliot. This is one I'm so excited for and I'm still so mad at myself for not reading in 2020. So definitely still excited for that one. And obviously Villette, which I've been talking about for way too long <laughs> to have not read it yet. So yeah, these are not my tabs. I bought it secondhand and these tabs came in it. But yeah, Villette. Really, I think I kind of want to make this my next Patreon buddy read. 
I'll see if they want it. <laughs> and then I have Epitaph of a Small Winner. This is another one that's actually my boyfriend's book. Um, and he really loved it, but I keep getting recommended it. I'm pretty sure it is a s translate from Spanish. Um, and it's a classic. I have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor, Fyodor Dostoevsky. And this is one that, again, I had meant to read in January. And I literally put it on my Goodreads as currently reading. And then I didn't read it because we're apparently not reading in January. <laughs> We also have On the Road by Jack Kerouac. This is another one that it's my boyfriend's book. And I feel like I should read it just because I feel like everyone makes references to it and I feel like it's an important piece of like modern classics, but uh, I've never really cared. <laughs> Tell me if this one is worth the read. I also have Consuelo by George Sand and this is a piece of French literature, French classic literature. Never heard anyone talk about this except for one of my subscribers who I love her, so I picked up this book. Um, so yeah, that's another one. Another one of my boyfriend's books that I stole, Tess of the D'Urbervilles. He's been recommending me that like since we started dating. Still haven't read it. Um, I have Persuasion by Jane Austen, which I swear I'm gonna give Jane Austen another chance. It's just I really hate Pride and Prejudice, so I'm always just like do I bother? But anyways, um, we have The Trial by Kafka. This is one I've always really been interested in and I just honestly need to sit down and read it. We have Anna Karenina. This is one that I really want to try. I just want to try Leo Tolstoy this year um, because I ended up loving Fyodor Dostoevsky so much. This is one I have tried reading Anna Karenina like two or three times in the past and just couldn't make it through. We <laughs> also have Inferno by Dante. This is one that I am waiting on. I'm currently reading the Bible as most of you guys know and I do think I'm going to wait to read this one until I'm done with this just to have a little bit more context and just to be able to really understand what's being discussed in this book. And I also have uh, The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. This is a book that I feel like everyone read in high school and I never had to read. Honestly, like sometimes I just am so angry at my high school teachers for not making me read the books that everyone else had to read because that's constantly my thing. I'm just like, I didn't read that classic because everyone read it in high school and then I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, that's another one that I feel like that one's been on my shelf for a really long time now. All right, now we have some nonfiction. I feel like my TBR just got way bigger because I started branching out. Like I used to be, I, I've gone through many phases with my reading. I used to be like every other book too or reading YA fantasy. And then I kind of got into more adult books and then I started getting more into literary fiction and then I got really into like more Asian literature and translated works. And then I got into classics and now I'm getting into nonfiction. So just, I think that's the reason my TBR pile is so freaking massive is I'm just like, I have a lot of different books that I like to read at the moment. But anyways, now we have a bunch of nonfiction. First up, I have a book that I just need to read for my personal research. A lot of people know this. If you don't, I, <laughs> I'm a Peter Pan scholar. No, um, I do Peter Pan for most of my research. I did it for my thesis, my master's degree, focus, all of that kind of stuff, and my PhD. I also plan on still focusing on Barry. Maybe not specifically Peter Pan, but I do plan on focusing on Barry. So I got J.M. Barry and the Theater by H.M. Wallbrook, and this is just a book that was constantly being cited in everything else I was reading, and I felt like I really should read it. This is honestly just a super, like, cheaply printed copy of this but I decided to get it because I have a lot of trouble reading online so if it has a physical copy I want it. Um, a book that I kind of bought for an essay but honestly like it's something that I've always been super interested in. I've ri written several essays on it um, is On Heroes, Hero Worship, and the Heroic in History by Thomas Carlyle. I write a lot about like celebrity culture and heroism um, in literature and like popular culture. Um, so yeah, this is another one that I just felt like I kept seeing so I wanted to get. Uh, yeah, the, I feel like I never talk about actual theory books, but there you go. <laughs> this is a book that I bought ages ago when I was like first trying to get into nonfiction. I saw it at a used bookstore and I never read it. This was years ago. Um, what to think about Machines That Think, edited by John Brockman, and this is about AI um, and robots. And honestly, it still sounds fascinating. I still, like, I have it because I'm interested. Also, I love the cover. It's like robotic Hamlet. <laughs> it's cool. Um, yeah, still definitely want to read that. Then I have a book that I'm like halfway into, a third of the way into, I'm like 61 pages in and I just definitely still want to read it. Um, and that is The Purity Myth by Jessica Valenti. I took a class all on sexual ethics and I loved it and so I picked up a couple of books 
from that class, I also have Yes Means Yes, Visions of Female Sexual Power and a, and a World Without Rape, also by Jessica Valenti. So these are two that I have that I definitely still want to read. I definitely want to finish this. I was super enjoying it, so I don't know why I never finished it. Newest addition to my shelf, I have Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Lita Hong Fincher. And yeah, this is a book that I feel like I've actually seen quite a few people talk about on like Bookstagram and Booktube, and I just think it sounds fascinating. So I decided to pick this one up very recently. Um, one that was sent to me by the publisher is Who We're Reading When We're Reading Murakami by David Karashima. And this, again, is exactly what the title looks like like it would be about. I definitely think I'm saving this for the next Murakami Marathon. I think this will be a really fun one to read, so. Can you guys tell I'm planning a Murakami Marathon? <laughs> I feel like I mentioned it in my last like three videos. And then I have My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Every time I hold this up I say I knew nothing about this woman before she died and I want to know more. So I picked up her book. I also have Joe Biden's Promise Me Dad because we have a new president and I want to read his book. So yeah. Those are my last two books I have on my TBR. Yeah, so um, this TBR pile is definitely uh, far bigger than normal. But again, I think it's from the fact that I have so many different books that I currently enjoy reading. I love having a nonfiction and a classic on the go at all times now, and obviously for fun reading. So, wow, this is probably the biggest TBR I've ever had. Actually, again, not ever. Maybe ever. It might be ever. Let me count. One second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forty! Exactly forty books. So yeah, it's not the biggest it's ever been. But <laughs> literally all I've been doing right now is reading ebooks and library books. <laughs> so that's not that smart. But anyways, yeah, these are the books that I am starting out 2021 with on my TBR. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And as usual, tell me down in the comments below. If you've read any of these books, which ones do you recommend I kind of bump up a little bit to the top of my TBR? Which ones are you interested in me, like, reviewing and stuff? Also, again, tell me if there are certain ones that you just don't think are worth it. I have quite a few on here that I'm kind of like, eh, about. But, um, yeah, definitely tell me all of your different opinions on these books down in the comments below. And anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!